Okay, in this video, I'm going to show you how to model the motion of this asteroid 2020 QG, which I don't, I don't know where that name comes from, but don't worry about it. Uh, and here you can see a picture of it as it passes near the Earth. So this is a near-Earth asteroid, and we're just going to use this as an example of uh, using the momentum principle in Python to model and visualize the motion of this asteroid. It's going to be awesome. Uh, there's a Wikipedia link to the where I found that image, and there is a picture of the uh, asteroid. Let's get started. Uh, the details, or the deets. I stole that from Parks and Recreation, but someone else may have taken it somewhere else. Uh, so this was uh, August 6, 16, 2020, was the closest approach of this asteroid, and it was 29... 100 kilometers from the surface of the Earth at its closest approach. The size of the asteroid, I mean, we don't actually know the size, but it's approximately a 3 di meter diameter. That's what I'm going to use, uh, asteroid. And then it had a velocity of, and I can't remember, on the Wikipedia page, I didn't see this velocity. I mean, the velocity changes as it moves along, of 12 kilometers per second. I found that somewhere else. If it's wrong, I, that's fine. I'm really here about the physics. I'm not here about the asteroid. Uh, so if you want to find the density, we don't actually have to find that density because this would only be important if it pulled on the Earth too, which it's not going to, but we can change that later. I'm going to say it's like iron-ish, so 7,000 kilograms per cubic meter. Uh, I do need the radius of the Earth because this is the distance from the surface of the Earth, but the Earth is bigger than that. So if the I need the distance from the center of the Earth to this object, so I'd have to add in the radius of the Earth. I also need the gravitational constant g. I need the mass of the Earth. There's other stuff, but I can I already have that looked up. And then one final assumption is that the Earth is not moving, just to make our calculations a little bit easier. Of course, this is not true. The Earth is moving. It's going around the sun. Um, so, and if you want, I'll put a link down below. I did a rough estimate of this calculation, how much this asteroid deviates as it passes near the Earth without doing a numerical calculation, but I'm going to show you how to do it in Python, and it's going to be awesome. So let's start with the, the main idea here. This is the Earth, and I drew that myself, and then we have uh, a polar ice cap down there too, that's Antarctica. And then the orange dot is the asteroid, not to scale. And I want to model the motion of this. So the first thing I need to do is calculate the gravitational force on that asteroid. Uh, so the gravitational force between two objects depends on the products of their masses divided by the distance between them squared. I need this vector r hat, which I'll show you in a second, in order to make it a vector. Okay, because I do need the vector force, not the not the scalar force. I need to know what direction this force is in. So the first thing I'm going to do is find the location of the Earth. I'm, I could put the Earth at the origin. It doesn't really matter. But in general, here's the Earth at some, the center of the Earth at some vector location, RE, where E stands for the Earth. And here is the vector location of the asteroid, which I'll go by its first name, Q. See, because it's QG, so I'm just going to call it RQ. Because see, the friend of the asteroid is called by its first name, Q. Now, I also need to know the vector from the center of the Earth to the asteroid. That's that vector r. And since I have, it's if you can think of this like final, the it starts at the Earth and it ends up at the asteroid, so it's like a change in position. It's delta r would be r final minus r initial. It's not r final minus r initial, but the same math. So I can write r as r q minus r e. So once I know those vectors, I can find the vector from the center of the Earth to the asteroid. Then I'll need to find the magnitude of the vector. I'm writing it out here, even though I don't have to do it this way. So the magnitude of the vector would be the x component squared plus the y component squared plus the z component squared. I need that because right up here I have in the calculation of the force, I have the magnitude of the vector squared. And then finally, I need, that's a, a scalar. So I wouldn't get a vector value. So I need this unit vector r hat. r hat is a vector in the direction of r, but it has a magnitude 1 and it has no units. So this is how we calculate. We find that vector r, which we should have, and we divide by the magnitude. And that's the calculate the gravitational force. But what do we do with the gravitational force? Well, here's the gravitational force on that asteroid, and we can use the momentum principle. So the asteroid has the momentum p1. I should have put that in there first. When a force, a net force acts on an object, it changes the momentum where momentum is the product of the mass and velocity. This is what forces do. They change momentum. So the net force on the object, in this case there's just one, F, 
is the change in momentum over the change in time. If you look at, if you call the change in momentum P2 minus P1, right, that's change, and solve for P2, I get this. That's a simple algebraic equation. P2 minus P1 equals F net delta T, add P1 to both sides, and I get P2. The momentum after some time interval is equal to the momentum at the beginning of that time interval plus the force that I just talked about times that time interval. Um, now that assumes that the force is constant over this time interval, but if I have a small time interval, that's not so bad. So here would be the new momentum after that time interval. So it goes from P1 to P2 based on that force, which I assumed is constant, it's not true. But it'll be okay, trust me. Now, but where that's the new momentum, but where is it? So if I look at where it was, R1, I can do the same thing that I did with position that I did with momentum. So here is the definition of average velocity. It's defined as the change in position over change in time. From that, and using the definition of momentum, I can get the following. R, the new position, R2, is going to be the old position, R1, plus the average velocity, which is P over M times delta T. Uh, sorry, that's the phone. Um, and so I can calculate that. But I don't want to calculate the average momentum. I want to calculate the, if I'm going to use the final momentum. So the final momentum at the end of that time interval is not the average, but if the time interval is short, it should work fine enough. So I'm going to take the final momentum, because I just calculated the final momentum, that's what I'm using that. Divide by the mass, multiply by delta t, and I can use that to update the position, and that's what I'm going to do to find this new position right there, r2. So then I can do two things. I can find the new momentum, I can find the new position. So here's the steps that we're going to do. Number one, calculate the, the force, the gravitational force on the asteroid. Number two, use that force to update the momentum after some time interval. And, and I'm saying small time steps, right? How big of a time step do you need? That's a question that we're going to address. Uh, number three, use that momentum that I just calculated to update the position. And again, this is wrong. Both two and three are wrong because they assume step two assumes a constant force. Step three assumes uh, a constant momentum, which is not true. Both of those are not true. And then finally, update time and repeat this until you get bored of repeating it or something bad happens or something good happens or the computer explodes. Whatever you want. It doesn't matter. Just keep doing this forever. And see, as I update the position, I'm going to update the force because I have a new, for new position. I'm going to get a new force. Okay, we're going to do this in Python, but here's a couple Python notes. First, just a reminder how to deal with the vectors in Python. If I have the vector a is 1, 2, 3, I don't have to manually find the magnitude. There's a built-in function in Python called mag. If I, if I call mag, and this is for GlowScript v Python. If you use plain Python, this isn't in there. Okay. If I just do mag a, it, it, it returns the magnitude of a. If I do norm a, it returns the unit vector for a. So if I print these out, you see what that would get. And I just picked a, a vector. Now here's one other really cool thing. I've already done a, a video about making visual objects and one visual object we're gonna use is, is a sphere. So if I do this, if I make the earth a sphere, I give it a position, I give it a radius, and I don't give it a color, I give it a texture. There's a built-in textures, and if I say texture is textures.earth and I run it, I get that. Awesome, yeah, that's the earth, cool, huh? Okay, so we're going to use all this thing. We're going to put it together. We're going to calculate the motion of this asteroid QG near the surface of the Earth, and it's going to be awesome. So let's move over to Python, and I'll see you there. Okay, I got a little head start here. Uh, I've already made the program. I've already made the Earth. Isn't that awesome? You can rotate. This is actually, look, it's actually the Earth. Not actually the Earth. It's a good, but it's a good module. And I'll, yeah, it is a little too shiny. You can fix all that stuff because uh, the light sources. Uh, aren't realistic in vPython, but you can, uh, who cares, you can change that. So what else do I have here? I have the gravitational constant, I have the mass of the Earth, I have the radius of the Earth, I have the the, the distance that the Earth, the uh, that the things, it, the nearest approach, the closest approach, I need, so I need to adjust that. The velocity, this is the density of the asteroid, uh, so I want to use that to find the mass. So let's say, um, let's just say that the radius is 1.5 meters, so I'll just say, uh, MQ 
is equal to the volume. I should have just done this. Let's just put the let's just put the mass as a thousand. It, it's much more than that, but I don't really want to deal with this. I, I don't want to waste time with that. Okay. So the next thing I can do is make the asteroid. So let's say uh, QG equals sphere, and uh, I'm going to give it a position. I want to start. I want to have this move in the positive y direction. So the uh, the the y coordinate, let's say, is going to be. Um, I'm just trying to think out loud here. So I have that distance r q. Let's say it's four negative four r q. And then this is going to be r q zero. So what I did was put it. Well, let's just I'll run that and you can see what it looks like. I need the radius. I'm not going to use the radius of the Earth. I mean of the of the asteroid because you wouldn't be able to see it. So I'm going to put something tiny like uh, a tenth the size of the Earth. So let's say radius equals R E divided by 10. I think that's too big. And let's put it as yellow just so it shows up. And let's add a trail. Make trail equals true. And let's run that and see if we can see what it looks like. And something happened. Minus, I know, times, dummy. Okay. Oh, four. Oh, I'm sorry. That's right. I want this as RQ and this is minus four. I think the size looks okay. Yeah, there. So now it's going to go straight up here and pass by. Okay. Um, and that would be a distance uh, of closest approach right there. It should work. That's really close. Okay. Um, it looks like it's going to be really close. So now the next thing I need to do is to, uh, let's put in some uh, properties. Let's say earth.m equals uh, me. That's just to be uh, object oriented. I want to be object oriented. Uh, Q, QG, that's a bad name, uh, dot m equals 1,000. Oh, I put it as mq. I need the initial velocity of that uh, and the initial momentum. So let's put that it says qg dot p equals qg dot m times the vector zero v zero zero. So see, I already put the the twelve kilometers per second up here. So this is going to be moving in the positive y direction that, that way with the momentum equal to that. That's cool. Okay, I think I'm ready. Let's time equals zero. DT. So the time step. Remember, if I if you look at the previous video, I said a time step of 30 minutes. I can do a time step of let's say five minutes. Let's try five minutes. So let's say five times uh, 60. Let's try that. If it's too big or too small, we'll fix it. And then we'll say while um, t less than. I calculated the time at like 7,000 seconds, I think. So let's just try that. Uh, now, the next thing we're going to do is, and this is my loop where I do my calculations. The next thing I want to look at is um, how fast I want this to go, how many times I want to calculate the, update the position graphically. So I'm just going to try something. I don't want to do it in real time because I don't want to wait 7,000 seconds. So let's try doing uh, 100 calculations per second and see what happens. Now I'm going to go and, and do what I said. The first thing I'm going to do, I want to calculate the force, but I need to calculate R. So I can say R equals the final position, which is the asteroid. So it'd be QG dot POS. That is the vector location of the asteroid. Minus uh, Earth, oh, it's lowercase, Earth dot POS. Yes, the Earth is at the origin. But I'm going to put this in here anyway, because now if I move the Earth, this will still work. Next, I'm going to calculate the force. So it's going to be F equals negative G times the mass, oh, big G times the mass of the Earth, which I'll say Earth dot M, times the mass of GQ, which is QG dot M, times the unit vector R hat. So it's going to be norm R divided by mag R squared. Now I'm going to use that force to update the momentum. QG dot P equals QG dot P plus F 
times dt. So here you'll see, this is one thing that always comes up, is that this is not, these do not algebraically cancel, even though they're on both sides of the equation, because this is not an algebraic equal sign, this is a make equal to sign. This says take f dt, add that to the momentum, and then make that the new momentum. So this is p2 equals p1, it's p3 equals p2, and all that stuff. Now I need to update the position of the asteroid. I'm not going to update the position of the Earth because I'll assume it's massive, which it is. Uh, so that will be qg.pos equals qg.pos plus the momentum, which I just calculated, qg.p times dt divided by the mass, qg.m. Now I need to update time. Time equals plus dt. And is that saving it? And I'll give this code down below. Let's see if this actually runs. You never know. Yeah, what the heck? It worked. It was a little fast. Let's make the let's make this time step a little bit smaller. Just to give it a little dr more dramatic. I'm pretty happy with that. That's pretty cool, huh? Let's let's cut down. No, I think that's good. And then let's do this. Let's print out the final velocity. Print v final equals and that's going to be equal to uh, qg.p divided by qg.m that's the velocity and then I want it in uh, meters per second and that's going to give me the vector the vector final velocity and so in the previous problem I'm doing this because in the previous problem I actually calculated my uh, my final x velocity this was like 300 so this is much this is like double but still not a bad calculation and i calculated a deflection angle of i think 12 degrees so i want to find the angle between this and this okay so i have my initial velocity let's call this uh, v0 equals no i can't let's say v just i'm just using a vector qg 0 equals vector zero v zero zero now how do i find the angle between these two i should have written this in the in the uh the presentation but if i take the dot product you could do this with um a lot of different ways but the easiest way because it's not just the x component that's changing it's the y component too you'll notice that it did slow down in the y direction because as it's over here gravity's pulling in the negative y direction to slow it down so it did slow down uh, so if i take the dot product between these two vectors then that would give me a new vector, a, a, a scalar value. But I could also take the magnitude of the two velocities multiplied together times the cosine of the angle between them. And that would give me a way to solve for the angle. So let's do this. I'm going to do it one step. Theta equals a cosine. That's the, R, the, the, uh, the inverse cosine. The dot product is going to be, it's just dot, right? Dot, uh, and it's going to be v q g zero is one vector the other vector is uh q g dot p divided by q g dot m so that's my dot product and then i need to divide that by the the magnitude of v q g zero times the magnitude of this other one which i'm just going to copy I feel like I'm going to make a mistake here. Mag. Okay. And then let's say print deflection angle. If this works, I'm going to be pretty happy. Equals theta times 180 divided by pi to get it in radians, to get it in degrees. I just like degrees. Okay. Oh, V. See, I knew it. I knew it. I knew I was going to make a mistake. VQG0, 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 V, so there's V, oh, lowercase. Check that out. Okay, so that, like a double deflection angle. I'm super happy. Okay, so just as a other thing, you can, if you want, you can increase the, uh, the, the w what if I want to say it's twice as far away, two times, and rerun it. Check that out. It's still at the 25 degree deflection angle.
Huh, okay, well, there you go. That's how you model this in as a numerical calculation in Python. I hope you enjoyed it. I actually had fun, so I'll talk to you guys later.